In this math talk, we're going to examine order of operations. And we use order of operations when we have computations that involve more than one calculation in them. So in this example, I've got 4 plus 2 multiplied by 5. And so the question becomes, with two operations, addition and multiplication, what is the correct order to perform them? And it's a good question because depending on which order you perform them, you will get two different answers. And so in mathematics, there's an agreed to order for which we perform operations. And it's got an acronym associated with it, and it's called bed mass. The B represents brackets, and so any operations that appear in brackets are always performed first in your calculation. The E represents exponents, so after brackets are performed, then you perform exponents. Then D stands for division, and M stands for multiplication. These are performed after brackets and exponents. But the interesting part about this is division doesn't necessarily come before multiplication. They're actually ranked the same level. So when you have both division and multiplication, you perform these operations as they appear in your equation from left to right. After you've performed brackets, exponents, division, and multiplication, then you move on to your additions and subtractions. And once again, addition and subtraction are ranked the same, just like division and multiplication in that you may perform an addition first or a subtraction first depending on where they appear in your equation. And so once again, these are performed left to right. So let's tackle this question using our bed mass ordering. So here we go. I'm looking at my equation and I see four plus two multiplied by five. So I have an addition and a multiplication to take care of. Well, when I look at bed mass, there are no brackets, there are no exponents in this first equation, but there is a multiplication. So that multiplication outranks the addition. So the proper way to answer this question is to perform the multiplication first. So we would write 4 plus, so we haven't done anything with the 4 or the addition, and we calculate 2 times 5, which would be 10. Then we perform our addition. So 4 plus 10 is 14, and that would be the correct answer. Let's try another. We have 9 subtract 8 divided by 4 plus 13. Now we're up to three operations. When we look at the subtraction, division, and addition, we recognize that the division comes ahead of either the addition or the subtraction. So we're going to perform our division first. And so we would write 9 subtract, so we've done nothing with that, and I perform the 8 divided by 4 now. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, and then I add my 13. And now this is where the left to right aspect of addition and subtraction become really important. I've got 9 subtract 2 plus 13. It's important to understand that I have to perform the subtraction which is on the left ahead of the addition that's on the right. So I would get 9 subtract 2 which is 7 and then I would add my 13. And so that leads me to an answer of 20. Let's add more operations. So looking at 10 squared divided by 13 squared subtract 12 squared. Well now all of a sudden I've introduced some brackets and exponents. So where do I begin in this question? Looking at the brackets that I have there, there's some operations to be performed. I have two squared operations, the 13 squared and the 12 squared as well as the subtraction. Well it's as though inside the brackets I've got my own little mini order of operations question. So I work out what's in the brackets before I proceed. And so in this case, because I've got the two exponents and the subtraction, I have to perform the exponents first. So for the moment, I'm not going to do anything with my 10 squared or my division or my subtraction. What I'm going to do is work out the 13 squared and the 12 squared. So the 13 squared is 169 and the 12 squared is 144. So I've taken care of the squared operations inside the brackets. There's still an operation remaining, and that's subtraction. So I still need to perform that. So my next line, I write 10 squared divided by, and I just calculate 169 subtract 144, which is 25. Now you might say, well, there are still brackets. Is there more work to be done? Well, no, we've just got a plain old number in a bracket. At that point, there's no operation to be performed. So really, the brackets are all finished. So now I exit the brackets and look at what I've got left. 
and I look at what's left, and really it's kind of like another order of operations question, where I've got an exponent and a division to perform. Well, exponents come before division, so I perform the 10 squared, which is 100, and I'll be dividing that answer by 25. 100 divided by 25 is 4. Now, I want to highlight for you what happens when you don't perform operations in the correct order. Let's take a look at this example. We're trying to evaluate 24 divided by 6 divided by 2. Now, you might look at that and say, well, we only have divisions in the question. Nothing outranks anything else. Why not do these in either order? Does it really matter? Well, let's take a look. Let's start with performing the division on the left first. So 24 divided by 6 divided by 2. I'll perform the 24 divided by 6, which would be 4, and then divide that result by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now, had we performed it the other way, it would have looked like this. 24 divided by 6 divided by 2. So if we divide the 6 by the 2 first, we get 24 divided by 3. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. So now we have two different answers to what appears to be the same question. And this would lead to a lot of difficulties for us if we allowed students to perform operations in any order. As you can see, we could get a whole variety of answers to questions. So it's agreed upon in mathematics that we perform equally ranked operations left to right. So the divisions have to be performed, the left division first and the right division second, not the other way around. So we have to discard that answer, saying that that's not correct. There would be one circumstance where you would perform the division on the right first, and that would be, of course, if you had brackets around it. That then tells me to perform the second division first, and then finally get an answer of 8. So in that situation, if I had had brackets around the 6 divided by 2, then the correct answer would have been 8. So that's kind of a subtle point, but a very important one. So it's really important you perform division and multiplication as they appear left to right, addition and subtraction as they appear left to right. Let's try one more, one that's fairly complex with lots of calculations in it. Okay, so we're going to evaluate 2 times 4 squared, subtract 3, bracket 10, subtract 2 cubed, close the bracket. So again in this question we have brackets, and that's where I'm going to begin. Now within the brackets I have a subtraction operation as well as an exponent. It's the exponent that needs to be performed first. So for the moment, I'm going to do nothing with any other part of the equation other than to perform that exponent, that 2 cubed. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And so now my bracket has been reduced to just a 10 subtract 8. Well, there's still an operation inside that I need to perform, that 10 subtract 8. So in the next line, once again, I'm going to leave everything really unchanged except for the 10 subtract 8 and I'll turn that into 2. 10 subtract 8 is 2. Now when I look at my question, I've finished off with brackets. I've got a number in brackets, but there's no more work to be done inside that set of brackets. So now I look at what's left, and I see multiplication, subtraction, and exponent. Well, the next operation has to be the exponent. So I have to calculate the 4 raised to the exponent 2. In other words, 4 times 4. So I would write 2 times, and 4 times 4 is... 16. Subtract 3 bracket 2. And now I want to talk about something that came up in earlier videos. Ways to represent multiplication. Right now I've got that 3 sitting beside the 2 in brackets. There's no operation written in between them. That is always understood to be a multiplication. So now really in my question I have two multiplications and a subtraction remaining. What I need to do is perform both multiplications. So I'll perform both of them in this line. The 2 times the 16 is 32. Subtract the 3 times the 2 is 6. So I've got 32 subtract 6. I'm left just with subtraction now. 32 subtract 6 is 26. I'm going to look at that question just one more time. And I want to show you how we can streamline a little bit of the work and reduce some of the writing by recognizing that in a long calculation, you can look at various parts as being separated. So when we look at that question again, when I look at that subtraction that lies in the middle of the equation, it separates what's happening on the left of it from what's happening on the right. So in fact, I can work the left side of the negative sign separately from the right-hand side. Let me show you what I mean by that. Because I've got exponents left and right, I'll work them both at the same time. 
And so the 4 squared is 16, and on the right-hand side, I have the 2 cubed, which is 8. So what I'll do next is work out that multiplication to the left of the subtraction sign. 2 times 16 is 32. And to the right, I'll finish off what's going on in the brackets. So I have subtract 3 times 2. So now all I have left to perform here is the 3 multiplying the 2. So I have 32 subtract 6, and then 32 subtract 6 is 26. A little less writing, a little more streamlined, a little more efficient. In the early going, you may find that to be too much to take on, and that's perfectly fine. More steps is typically better than fewer steps, but as you get good at these, as you do lots and lots of questions, you'll find that there's some places where you can streamline some of your work. Uh, but that just comes with time and practice, and so I say to you, do lots and lots of these questions. Very important going forward in mathematics. Thanks for watching.